to say dinosaurs have been found all over the world would be an understatement. Uncovered on every continent, many lived within environments that were just as diverse and extreme as the conditions that shape ours today. Amongst the most diverse of these dinosaurs were the ankylosaurs, a group of dinosaurs renowned for their different sets of armor plating covering their bodies, from spikes to scoots to even club tails. Some were even amongst the first dinosaurs ever named. But these weren't the only firsts for ankylosaurs. In fact, did you know that ankylosaurs were amongst the first dinosaurs ever discovered from Antarctica? But the Anki in question named in honor of this very discovery, called Antarctopelta. Antarctopelta was an ankylosaur from late Cretaceous Antarctica who lived at the bottom of the world 70 to 66 million years ago. While often overshadowed by the more famous Cryolophosaurus, Antarctopelta was the first non-avian dinosaur to be discovered on the continent, period, having been recovered from the frozen coasts of the Antarctic in 1986, four years before Cryolophosaurus. That being said, unlike Cryolophosaurus, Antarctopelta wasn't named until 20 years after its discovery in 2006, with only a single recognized species at the moment named Antarctopelta oliveroi. After the animal's curious set of armor, the armor in particular is characteristic of the greater group this animal belonged to, the aforementioned ankylosaurs. Ankylosauria were a group of armored dinosaurs that had rosettes of armor covering their bodies, and have been found all across the Northern Hemisphere, from North America to Asia to even Europe. Now I know what you're thinking. What is an ankylosaur doing in Antarctica? Well, it was the same question scientists have been asking themselves in the many decades following Antarctopelta's discovery one that we've had to piece together piece by piece. Unlike the frozen desert and frigid ocean that make up modern day Antarctica, this currently frozen continent was once a lush paradise during the Cretaceous period, one composed of temperate forests, shifting seasons, and a diverse variety of dinosaurs. This was due to Antarctica's place in the world being much different than it is today. You see, Antarctica was once part of a supercontinent called Gondwana, a large landmass that would one day become Africa, South America, Australia, and of course, Antarctica. During this state, Antarctica was much farther from the poles due to continental shift, and was still connected to its neighbors, South America and Australia, as late as the end of the Cretaceous period, allowing for each landmass to exchange a number of flora and fauna for millions of years. Antarctica's fossil record, while relatively sparse compared to other continents, reveals a rich set of ecosystems that once blanketed its surface, thanks to the remains of the fossils left behind. From entire fossilized forests preserved beneath the ice, to the fossilized animals that once lived in them at different points in time. Animals like Antarctopelta. Antarctopelta is a mysterious case of an ankylosaur in that we had very little idea what this animal was until fairly recently. Well, other than that it was an ankylosaur. The bigger question in this case was, if this was an ankylosaur, where exactly does it sit on the Anki family tree? Frankly, because the only fossil specimen of Antarctopelta is composed of fragmentary fossil remains. As a result, we've often had to rely on other ankylosaurs to reconstruct this armored critter. For decades, Antarctopelta was reconstructed as a notosaur, a type of ankylosaurian with narrow heads and large spikes adorning their sides and shoulders, like Borealopelta, Papasaurus, and in particular, Sauropelta. Sauropelta has often acted as a base for reconstructions of Antarctopelta due to both sharing a similar set of armor, in particular, a large shield over the hips similar to those of Sauropelta itself. However, this mystery came one massive step closer to being solved, thanks to the description 
of Antarctopeltus' currently closest known cousin, Steguros. Described in 2021, Steguros, not to be confused with Stegosaurus, was a small ankylosaurian dinosaur from what is now Chile, with truly odd proportions, most notably a set of large plate-like structures on its tail, similar in shape to a frond or a macuahitl. Stegudos is one of the most unique members of Ankylosauria discovered thus far. Or so you might think. While it may not look like most Ankylosaurians, when the holotype or original specimen of Stegudos was compared to those of other Ankies from the southern hemisphere, they found they were strikingly similar to those of Minmai, Cambarosaurus, and most of all, Antarctopelta. Under these new diagnostic traits gained from its description, Stegudos and Arctopelta and their closest kin would form a new clade of ankylosaurs, Paraankylosauria. This group of newly erected ankylosaurians were very dissimilar to their northern cousins, having horizontal rows of armor with proportionately larger heads, small bodies, and elongated limbs contrary to the stout posture of their larger, wider-bodied northern counterparts. What's more, members like Antarctopelta and Stegudos evolved distinctive, frond-shaped tails similar to a Makahitl, a type of Aztec axe. While a complete tail hasn't been found on Antarctopelta, based on the tail vertebrae, this animal had similar rows of scoots and spikes running up the tail, similar to Stegudos albeit not as dramatic. However, one factor that set Antarctopelta apart from its relatives was size. While it was far from the biggest dinosaur, measuring in at an estimated 13 feet or 4 meters, it was a giant amongst armored dwarves, as most known members of Paraankylosauria were fairly tiny. This could be due to Antarctopelta facing differing pressures from its relatives. Perhaps the lack of larger carnivores or lack of competition with large herbivores encouraged the growth of larger Antarctopelta. Or perhaps it was the same classic pressure Antarctica always throws at its inhabitants. Climate. Make no mistake, while Antarctica wasn't a frozen wasteland like it is today, Cretaceous Antarctica still had some pretty cold winters. It would still experience seasonal changes throughout the year going from temperate during the spring and summer months to the biting cold of the winter months without an ounce of sunlight. As a result, Antarctopelta's larger size may have been in response to the colder climate of its home, evolving larger bodies to retain more heat during the changing seasons. Antarctopelta's armor could have also been advantageous for temperature regulation. Modern crocodilians like alligators have scoots similar to those of ankylosaurs, one they may not only have used for protection, but for regulation and distribution of heat throughout their bodies. Perhaps Antarctopelta used similar adaptations in its armor as well. The ability to self-regulate temperature is what allowed dinosaurs to spread across the world, allowing them to inhabit colder regions to this very day, such as modern penguins. This is because unlike most reptiles, dinosaurs, birds included, are endotherms, able to retain and regulate their own body heat without the need for external resources to aid them in regulating body temperature. It's these crucial tools that allow dinosaurs like Antarctopelta to survive in such frigid conditions at the bottom of the world. However, Antarctopelta wasn't the only dinosaur living in Antarctica around this time. And while they are rare in Antarctica's fossil record, what we have shows a striking array of dinosaur diversity from Cretaceous Antarctica. Antarctopelta lived in a locality that is known as the Snow Hill Formation, a geological formation on the coast of Antarctica. Living alongside Antarctopelta, were small ornithopod dinosaurs like Morosaurus and Trinisaura, small herbivores that didn't have the armor plating of Antarctopelta, but instead had large eyes and long legs that allowed them to escape danger. The largest land predator in the locale was Empyrobator, 
a large Paravian of unknown lineage of dinosaur. Known only from a foot, this dinosaur is often interpreted as a very raptor-like animal, with size equating to that of known giant dromaeosaurs like Utah Raptor and Achillevator, a creature that would have been more than a match for Antarctopelta. To top off this cast of creatures, even during the age of dinosaurs, birds were thriving in Antarctica, like Antarcticavis, that once fluttered amongst the trees on this once greener world. However, despite this menagerie of creatures, these extreme survivors would not persist to see the modern day, or even the age of mammals, with Antarctopelta and many of its contemporaries falling into extinction 66 million years ago, along with the rest of the non-avian dinosaurs. While Antarctopelta may have faded into the fossils of natural history, its remains continue to teach us about this astounding ankylosaur, along with the rest of its closest kin. It may not be the biggest or, or even the first named dinosaur of Antarctica, Antarctopelta nevertheless stands as a testament to the diversity of not only dinosaurs, but the unique groups of animals that thrive and survive at the bottom of the world.